Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. I'm Miss Lisa, and this is my YouTube channel for everything I want to talk about math and science. And what we're going to do today is we're going to use our TI-84 graphing calculator, but your TI-82s and 3s will do it also. And we are going to graph parametric equations. So you know we love these problems in the in, in math. You're, you're, you're uh, hitting a baseball, you're throwing a football, all these things, all these word problems they love to give you. Well, you can do it on your calculator, and it won't tell you the exact answer, but you'll know if you did the work right. So this is a really helpful thing for checking. All right, so these are called parametric equations, and um, we have our two equations, and it was at a driving range, you hit a golf ball, at ground level with the initial speed of 120 feet per second at an angle of 45 degrees. Oh, they love these problems. Using a graphing calculator to graph a set of parametric equations that describe the path of the ball. Then use the graphing calculator to estimate how far the ball travels. So we do these in physics too. And uh, you can watch my physics videos where I explain that whenever you have this parabola shape, there's an x component and y component that are independent. So we have an x equation and a y equation, and they went ahead and solved them for us. Um, I was confused at first because I was like, what in the world are they doing? And I'm so used to teaching science that it confused me that they used 32 feet per second squared for gravity, not 9.8 meters per second squared, which is what we use in physics class, because their velocity is at 120 feet per second. So it's, they used English. Like, I had to think about that so long. <laughs> I was so confused because I'm so not used to using English units. Okay, and then the other thing uh, that, yeah, I went ahead and solved that equation and figured it out. So if those little notes help you any. But anyway, the approximate answer is 84.9 T. And then the Y component is one-half gravity etc. The, the equation, they filled it all out, and they got negative 16t squared plus um, 84.9t. So those are our two equations, but we got to put it in, not regular functions, we're going to put it in um, under parametrics in our calculator. So go to your calculator, turn it on, go to mode, and then arrow down and right now, you're probably right here in function. You need to arrow over to parametric and hit enter. Now when you go to your yx, you get this weird looking thing. And we're going to put it in our formula. So our first one is x equals 84.9t. And, and notice um, how I put in t, I'm going to delete that to show you, is you just use your x button. See how t is the second thing? Your calculator knows it needs to be t because it's in parametric mode. Your calculator knows when it needs to be theta, when it needs to be n. So, da-da, look, there's the t. And then negative, you do the negative at the bottom. Uh, 16t squared, I did t, and then I hit the squared button. And then plus 84.9t. Okay, now um, they tell us to set our window. So you do need to do this. So um, on our window, they want T to be between 0 and 10. So your minimum is 0, your maximum is 10. They want the change to be 0.01. And they want the X minimum to be 0, the X maximum to be 500, the scale to be 50 the y minimum to be negative 50, the y maximum, they don't show you here, it needs to be 150. So make sure if you're doing this problem with me that you get a good y max. If you're doing a different problem, you might have to play with that. But just when you graph it, you want to be able to see the whole little parabola. All right, so now we're going to graph it. Yay, look how fun that is. Look at that perfect parabola. Okay, and now we want to know the answer. We want to know how far we hit the golf ball. So we're going to hit trace, and this takes forever. We can sing a song while we're waiting on this. We're going to use our arrow key to get where the golf ball hits the x-axis. And my line goes beneath the x-axis, but of course, in reality, the golf ball will not go into the ground. It will bounce or go in a little hole or something, go in a little cup. 
but look how long this takes. And when I teach this to kids in a group, when we're face to face, um, some calculators take even longer than this. I think some of the old um, TI 82s, 83s, and the old black and white 84s, I think even this is going faster because I remember the kids being just taking forever to arrow around to get the answer. So what we want to do is we want to get our little blinky thing right where these two connect and a little bit further. I don't think it's there now. See how we're looking at Y? Look, see how Y is negative there? So that's just barely too far because it's just barely negative. So the answer is just barely under 450.819. So the book says the answer is about 450. So if you did this problem and you wanted to see if your answer was right, you put it in here and you could about figure it out too. You could, you could check your answer. That's what it's good for. So... Um, and that's really helpful. Uh, my kids, when they took big algebra exams, they always had a problem like this. And so it's very useful to be able to check your work. All right. So if you're following along with the book, you're going to do number one and figure it out too. And if you want to do number two, also there's the answer. I know no, the um, evens are not in, in your book, but you can pause it on this and read the answer and then you'll know. All right. Okay, that was fun. It's fun doing fancy math. That was fancy math. So, like, share, subscribe. Math is great.